Oh my John Coltrane Jenkins, look in the sky. Wow, Gary, I can't believe it. It's a jazz musician. And not just any kind of jazz musician. It's the jazz trumpet player. Or, as my uh, <laughs> my boys on the court call me, Austin. Nah, just what people call me. But people actually really don't call me Austin. Like I can't actually remember the last time someone's just come up to me and been like, What's up, Austin? Like, nah. <laughs> people really don't call me that. People call me a certain nickname that will be denounced in a later video. But, you know, I'm going to start vlogging, talking about my life, my love for music. You know, I think music is... Hands down, a beautiful thing. Um, and it pisses me off because I made a vlog last night and it was so wrong in the moment. And it was like, honestly, like I really liked how it turned out. I, I edited it and everything and uh, my dumb ass deleted it. <laughs> I'm so stupid sometimes. But, uh, you know, it's what happens, you know. When you sit on a stick at four years old, you know bad things are going to happen. I love different types of music. The main two things I surprisingly do, which I can't even believe, is just how it is, are jazz improvisation and salsa lead trumpet. <laughs> Probably like, what? Those are two random things to be, uh, you know, your main, you know, two styles of music. It's so weird, because I even listen to myself, and I'm like, <laughs> I sound like a jazz player with the sound of a salsa lead trumpet player sometimes. I need to rub butter all over my body again. But, uh, you know, I try, I'm really trying to do it all and explore all types of music. And I, you know, I write, I write a lot of music too. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I actually really like classical trumpet. I really like classical music. I love listening to it. I love, uh, you know, playing it. I think, I think it's just as good, but you know, jazz trumpet, I, 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 I do, I do really have a knack for just like, you know, just lines and. Even the, the screaming high note aspect of the trumpet. I love that aspect of the trumpet. You know, lines, all this out crazy stuff and, you know, this, the high note aspect of the trumpet. There's something about that, man. Just a screaming loud lead trumpet player. Just a screaming loud trumpet player in general. Excuse me. <laughs> You're excused. <laughs> Sorry, I always have to tell myself... I'm excused when I, when I burp. <laughs> nah, who, who does that kind of shit? Not I said the bear. But yeah, there, there's something about a, a a lead trumpet player that... Or just, sorry. Just loud, screaming, high note trumpet that I love. You know, lead trumpet players too, I love too. But, you know, screaming, high note trumpet. I'm trying to mix that with jazz and like, you know, playing outside the chord changes and all this crazy intervallic shit. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm really into that kind of stuff, man. Before I uh, let all my secrets be known and show you guys how much of a, a wuss I am, <laughs> we should go to my VIP spot in my house. And that's what also sucks, man. I I made this vlog last night, and I was at my school, and I was, like, really getting into it, and I was kind of being loud. Now I'm in my parents' house, and, like, they're going to hear me and be like, wow, my son is ten times more fucked up than I thought he was. <laughs> Even though they know I'm a little... I'm a little corny, 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 corny lad, you know, it's, it's all about the corniness, and, you know, to make the crops, have a little bit of a, a humor, if you will, um, and I like doing funny, stupid shit, and I, you know, this, uh, these vlogs, you know, I, you know, I'm also gonna do, other than talking about music, and, you know, showing you guys stuff about music, I'm gonna also do funny, stupid shit that make people laugh, I'm all about that, man, I'm also about doing crazy stuff in the moment, you know, as a, as a, as a person, and a musician, Especially when I'm playing trumpet, I love going for things in the moment, you know, when my, you know, there's that Drake song where it's just like, my heart says no, but my, my mind says yes. <laughs> it's probably not Drake, but it's probably someone. I, I, I like going for things, you know, I'll hear, I'll, especially I'll hear them and then like, you know, I'll go for them and they might not come out <laughs> good, but I don't care, you know, it's on to the next thing. And that's the thing, like, even about that vlog last night, you know, it's, it's like jazz, even in writing music in general. Say I write something, we don't end up playing it. 
I don't care. I'll write something completely new. I, I always practice new kinds of patterns and, you know, lines, and I'm always checking out different people randomly. I kind of like it because I'm always, you know, doing something different. I like different. At the same time, though, I like to refresh on what I've already done and, you know, keep some concepts together. I, I think uh, it's important, you know, to know, you know, the roots of this music and to know the tradition but to also, you know, do your own thing and really, you know, keep exploring, keep listening and always like, you know, something you like. Never be afraid to try to figure that shit out. That's the biggest thing is always imitation in this music, I think, is the biggest thing. But uh, without further ado, let's hit the I shed. I actually lounge. call it the shed lounge. I just, I don't know, call it practice space, call it whatever you want, honestly. Call it the most lit place on earth, if you will. Make sure the door is not too uh, wide open. It's my pull-up bar. Keeps me in shape, but I haven't been fucking with pull-ups recently. I've been doing a lot of push-ups. You know what? Crank out a set right now. Just for y'all. Wow. 60 push-ups later, and uh, I'm a little red in the face, but that's how you do it. Ugh. Some people think you need the gym. Nah. You just need your two arms. It's I always try to bust out as many push-ups as I can. Sometimes do 400 or 500 of them, sometimes more. When I was younger, I used to do you know, sometimes up to 800 or 1,000 in a day. I was in like some of the greatest shape of my life, but then this thing really took over my life, and it's a little bit harder now, so I try to but trying to keep up on it, though. You know, it's it's good. It's really good. So uh, I've, I've, been fucking, I've been fucking with this tune called uh, Alone Together. You know, I, I really, my friends were like, Isu, you need to learn this tune. Alone together, and I was like, hmm, alone together. No, I mean, it's just, you know, it's a, it's a standard that everyone in jazz plays, but, you know, my friends at school, you know, I play it a lot. Oh, there we go. Yeah, the, the, the chord changes uh, sound like this. and then in the right hand, E major. So it was the whole step above. And, you know, we'll talk about, in general, I'm going to make an um, introductory to jazz um, and talk about, you know, things I wish I knew when I was younger. Thing being melody. I wish Ronald McDonald, instead of showing the golden arch, showed melody, you know. People would go to melody rather than, you know, Loathing themselves in fast food like McDonald's, like oh, I couldn't eat that shit. But you know, I wish they wouldn't do Melody because Melody's beautiful. McDonald's is trash. <laughs> not saying you're trash if you eat McDonald's, but not my thing. Not for me. I love the sharp though. music. Music kind of takes me over. Um, I really, really enjoy. You know, sometimes I start like talking and then like. get way too into it and <laughs> before you know it yeah so one of the biggest chords you encounter in this song especially in the a section is a minor two five and like i said one thing we're talking about in jazz the most common chord progression in jazz drum roll please that's right a two five fucking one random ones there but knowing it in every single key like that lickety split is uh the goal and I'll, I, you know like i said in the introductory video of jazz that i'm gonna make you know just talking about things that i wish i knew and that people would actually have been cool with me about you know and slow down and not have to try to like you know or forwell me with every kind of thing this music should be about so yeah we're now we're gonna be dealing with a minor two five one especially this song minor two five one is to d minor six or D minor 7. I mean, I, I think it was 6. That's, that's what the, the song calls for. Uh, this voicing also is nice, too. Uh. I, the thing is, I like to even, like, really screw around with bass lines, too. Uh, let's do this voice. But, like, if 
I was even the walk of bass line in the song, too. And, like, this thing with bass lines, like, they don't even have to be complex. You could just do, like, just one, boom, 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 like, 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 two, three. Actually, I'll use one, two, one, three, six. I'm going to do one for right now to be comfortable. I'm trying to get this one into my right hand more. I can do it more in my left hand, but this one I'm trying to get my right hand more. <laughs> This voice thing. You know, all 12 keys. Uh, where's another good place I could put it? Um, yeah, there's another different example, different key. Before I get too carried away, then I get that. And like I said, all the more of my left hand and practicing lines, you know. And this key, which is a minor 2 5, it's A minor, A minor 9, when I get it really. I'll do this line. I, I've been working on this. There's another one we're going to talk about later on in this video that's hip as hell. When's the last time someone said hip who's not an old man? This guy. I'm cool, I swear. The line. Do that one more time. That was a little sloppy. I don't really play the piano, it's just not my main, you know. It's like a it's like a video game, it's just like, oh he's on his main, you know. He's on his main, whatever, you know. <laughs> Maybe it's not a video game. I lie. I mean I practice a lot of piano, but I'm not the greatest. I can get around it though, and that's that's the biggest thing. If you can get around the piano, that's you know in my opinion, it's better than being a professional piano player. No, I'm just kidding. It's obviously a lot better if you're a professional piano player. But anyways, so let's um, let's get into the minor two five. What is it? Why is it? Did aliens create it? Nah, my mom did. When we're dealing with a minor two five, the first chord we see, obviously, if we're even in the key, we'll, we'll do the key uh, of D minor. That alone together deals with. We just did A minor for the fuck of it, but let's, let's, do, let's do a D minor. So D minor six for the bass here. And I have a pocket in this shirt. Let's kill it. Uh, yeah. Is it facing? Yeah, it's facing that way. All right, we're good. So say D minor six. Uh, the minor two five there, really. We're going to a minor chord. In this case, we're going to D minor. Root, I'm doing D and B in the bass, and then the the third, the fifth, the sixth. Like normally it would be seven, but I'm I'm gonna do the the third since the, the song alone together is a minor six chord. And six is hip. You know, I, I really think six is really hip. Um, I'm doing third, fifth. 13 or 6. 13 means the same thing as 6. 9 means the same thing as 2. There's something we'll, we'll talk about more. Now. I wish I had a pedal on here. G. Hopefully my voice speaks as loud as my words. <laughs> Just kidding. Going to D minor. And sorry, I have terrible problems focusing. I, yeah, I can never keep myself focused. <laughs> I'm always going to try to go so many different ways. And as a kid, I've, I've never done good in school. You know, probably something I'll talk about. Never had great focus. I don't know. Something that's crazy. I do struggle with focus. That's an interesting thing to talk about. I think why is it why is it the two five? Like what what makes this the two five? Well, we're going I guess we're going to D minor six. I explained, you know, the voice. And if we look, what's the two of D? Minor at least. E. What's the five? If we go up the scale. One, two, three, four, five. It's A. So a two, five. D, or what sounds better if you go the octave below. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, what's the first chord we're dealing with? That's right. A half diminished chord. And most people in jazz, they see that half diminished or minor 7 flat 5. Which, by the way, a half diminished is the same thing as minor 7 flat 5. And people hit that chord, they're like, what the, whoa, whoa. And I know I was there. I remember seeing that for the first time, it's like, <laughs> Almost reminded me as uh, I remember the first time I saw half the minute square. I remember it was almost as dark as the sky out there, only it was not nearly as. But you know, I definitely stole my heart in the way that it kicked my ass <laughs> with the camera, like so many different freaking ways. Actually, no, I got to oh my god, all right, we got it in the right place now. All right, 
So when you're when you're dealing with this, um, a minor seventh or, or at least a, a two five to a minor chord, the first chord is or the two chord is a minor is minor seventh flat five or half diminished. And a great way to voice it, well, if we were to take it root position, that would be root position. This would also be root position. Oh, sorry, my bad. A dominant chord, but that's like the most stupid way to voice it. Like you never would do that. And like I said, yeah. E, G, B flat, D. These are just like just root position chords. A, uh, D flat, uh, uh, E, and G, and then back to minor six. That's root position, but that's a stupid way to voice it. Or a great way to voice it that I've always loved. I learned this in jazz school. Is I voice it. Um, let's do it in the right hand. Righty flighty. Seven root three five, and that moves nicely to what is called an altered voicing, and this is where we have you know, uh, you know flat nine sharp nine, which I said also talk about, and this you know we're gonna voice this uh, A in the bass, G on top of that, which is the seven, so root seven, and then the three, um, what would I call this? The flat thirteen. Yes, flat six, flat thirteen, flat seven, and the sharp nine. A in the bass, G is the seventh. Except we're doing with an A, uh, A seven altered. That's the thing on minor two fives. You know, you want the altered sound more, or the flat nine sound too, which is cool. Uh, that's cool. I'm kind of building diminishing with it right there, but you want, you mainly want. Uh, you want the altered sound, which is, you know, A in the bass, 7 on top of that, which is G, and then uh, the 3, the flat 13, the flat 7, and the sharp 9. And that resolves perfectly to our minor 6. Or actually, if we're going to do minor 7 here, you could also do it like this, resolve it here, which I didn't think I, I should have actually done it like this. Uh, 7, 9, 3, 5, or like that. So that would sound like... I did a little 7 to 6. But I mean, in general, you could also do... Do it like that, too. That voicing I showed y'all earlier. Which is also... Hip sickle. That's a hip way to voice it. And then doing that in every single key. And there's another, uh, there's another voicing, which is great. It has the natural 9... 13 there but yeah natural nine sounds great on a minor two fives my friend told me that that works and i was like oh wow you know i'm going to there i could even go to like you know i'm here my interest in that that's crazy but at the end of the day learning every single key that's the biggest thing i'm going at yeah this one seven root three flat five to the altered three flat 13 flat seven sharp nine and then and then but it should you can just go right to here six nine three five but yeah man that killing voicing and you know it's like i said really learning in every every single key and just trying to get down to your fingers <laughs> That's cool. But to keep it keep it to the video. Keep it to the video. As I say, you know. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, I'll do another random piece to show you guys next time. keys the goat uh more voicings and stuff you know like i said later videos and uh yeah so now let's talk about the line i know you guys have been waiting for this one like it's the miles davis of reality look at those lifts mm. i kill for a pair of lifts like that but yeah so the minor two five i came up with i came up with this and I'm, there's, other, there's other ones that i'm shedding 
And, uh, you know, I love practicing lots of lines. At the end of the day, you have all this stuff worked out and all the keys. And then when you go to play, you could filter down just think melody. And it's really cool because when you think melody, it really filters you out and makes you think differently. And it really it helps you use all the voice leading, but in a melodic sense. It's really great. And, you know, when you're soloing over this progression, the biggest thing is just connecting your thirds and sevenths. Like on that one, for example. What's the third of... Uh, E half diminished, bam, G, what's the seventh, D, and then for the A, they move perfectly, you know, down, the seventh stays, and the third comes down, and then when we get to the minor seven or six, we got into seven, or my bad, three, seven, so starting on the half diminished, three, seven, boom, and then they would go down like that. And really focusing on those notes when you solo is the biggest thing, but since the minor six goes to here. And when you play over this progression. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll try to be a little more melodic there too. Like the whole thing is like really trying to nail those third and sevens. Being more technical, trying thinking about third and sevens, and like I said, I'll talk about this more. But uh, or even like yeah, and trying to tie the melody into that stuff too is the biggest thing. Melody and being technical. That's why I guess I like to practice lots of line and just kind of filter it out. Third and sevens is the biggest thing. Anyways. This line that I came up with. So this is in a different key, and then we'll we'll transpose it to D minor. But I I learned it in all the keys, you know, as you should. And I put it in all the all the keys. My piano isn't as big as the one at school. What pisses me off was the vlog I made yesterday. Awesome. I had that that advantage too. And so forth, so forth, every single key. Because I was sloppy, one last time. <laughs> so anyways. So my, what am I thinking of when I play that line? Well, we're about to find out. And a great, a great scale you could use over that whole uh, progression, like I said, harm, harm, harmonic minor or even natural minor. You know, thinking really off that harmonic minor scale. The scales associated with a half diminished chord, the biggest scale is the Locrian scale. The, since it's on E, we would use the E Locrian scale. And we'll talk about modes, you know, in the video too about introductory jazz. Um, the Locrian scale is the seventh mode of just the mode of a major scale. So, what's E the seventh of? F major. So, you would use that, you would use the E Locrian scale over the E half diminished. And then that would go nicely too. I'm going to say the B flat melodic minor scale. When you get here. But starting on the seventh, which is A. So it's really the A altered scale. Another scale you could use too is uh, called the Phrygian dominant. The Phrygian dominant scale. Or sorry, yeah, Phrygian dominant is what it's called. It's a mode of, har of harmonic minor. But it sounds like this. My bad. You know, and like that's a great scale to use on the five chord because you're hitting everything. But you know, I would think B flat melodic minor starting on the seventh A once you hit the five chord. Use the A alternate scale, and then once you get to the root, use thing Dorian, D Dorian. And that's coming out of C major because the two is C major. It's just starting on playing C major, starting on D, and that's why that's why these modes are so important. But I'll talk about that more in later videos. But so, 
Like I said, the line I have starts on the three of the half diminished, or the E half diminished, which is G, the three, and it starts, it goes to the 11, and it does a walk up to the flat 13, and that's out of the F Locrian scale, which, or sorry, the E Locrian scale, which is F major. Five hitting like, and like, it's hitting that. So it works, and that's why that works. And those are the scales you want to use over the, these, uh, these chord changes. Great. And like I said, you know, simplifying chord changes is the biggest thing, like thinking, you know, harmonic minor over it or you know stuff like that really thinking off you can really hit that that uh that natural minor sound like if someone says catch you know everyone knows what catch means everyone knows what Everyone knows what that means in jazz. It's just the language. It's just the language. And I think the best person who ever described it was Arturo Sandoval. He said, you got to listen to the records because, you know, it's something you can't describe. And yeah, it's just like that. And it's interesting. I don't want to sound like a teacher. Never want to sound like a teacher. Um, so like I said, I do that. I, I start on the three. Then I do a chromatic walk up from the 11 to the flat 13 of the um, E half diminished. And then I do a double note thing, and man, this comes, the whole double note thing, I, I remember I was at a jam session, and my friend is a sax player at Dakota, shout out, he, he just played some line that was like, uh, or, or even like, uh, I'm just coming up with some random shit there, but. He played like that double note kind of thing. So I was like, hmm. You know, I was coming up with this line the other night. Just, just heard it and, you know. Like I said, starting on the three. Doing the chromatic walk up to that double note thing. And then going back down from the 13th after I did the double. Back down. And then going back down from um, from the three, well, you do the chromatic walk up thing from the eleven, back to the three, and now we're on. But now it turns into the seventh of the uh, A seven altered, and then down the scale. So all right, my bad. It goes down the scale to the to a concert D, and then does some chromaticism to the three. And like I said, connecting your third and seventh is the biggest thing. And then flat nine, which is third to flat nine. Those notes, man. Third to flat nine resolution. You know, that's how you kind of dance around chord changes, even like. Or even just like. You know how I could even. Or, you know, I'm really using that third to flat nine to really get my voice leading across and just get the from voice there. So, anyways. Chromaticism, and then I use that flat nine to get to the three. Then I throw some jazz vocab in there, and then I do, you know, this. That's not that's another line you can learn in jazz that really is good, you know. But I, I use that to kind of for my voice over story again. That line, and it's off the D Dorian scale, starting five down. Back to the 11, then. And then thinking like harmonic minor again, or melodic minor. And then one, two, three of D minor. And then up a uh, half to mi or sorry, uh, up a. Uh, uh, what is it? Um, minor major seven. There it is. So, uh, going up a minor, a major minor seven arpeggio, and that works. It sounds great. You know, major minor seven sounds great, and even you know, it gives you some crazy sound. But it sounds great over it. <laughs> Uh, 
like I said, start in the three, do the chromatic walk down, three, and the chromatic walk down from the 11 to the flat of the eighth. Then the double note, and then back down. Then chromatically connect. Use that flat nine to get to our five. And then, and really trying to be like, yeah. And you're like, but you know, having a little pause in there, kind of like that's the whole thing. You know, we're really trying to, you know. You know, having that kind of stuff in there, like the trills and the turn. You know, really using those turns. You know, using those turns and trills are great, but anyways. So that's the whole thing with it, and you could even think of the whole line. This is a, a hack I use when I put things in 12 keys. You could think of the whole line, since we're going to D minor, you could think of the whole line as relative to D minor. So, you know. You know. Starts from the 11, and then it goes up from the 5 D minor, and then it hits the flat 13. And yes, you could think that. Hits the flat 13, and then hits the 13, and then goes to the flat 7. And like I said, it's all relative to D minor, like D minor. You know. You know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And if, you know, we hit a flat 13 in relative to D minor, you know. Or you could think of it as, like, the sharp 5 in relative to D minor. You know, and, like, they continue to line more, you know. Down from the 3. And then... It does chromaticism to the the seven, and then the flat thirteen to the five, natural seven again, and then up that uh, major minor arpeggio, which deal with uh, that. So that's the thing I like to think of it. You know, as a shortcut, I like to think of it all in relative to the D minor. You know, when I put things, or just like relative to the home key when I put things in twelve keys. So yeah, that's the line, man, and that stuff sounds great. You know, over a two five and a, a minor two five, it really opens you up to you know really connecting that voice with it. One more time for the folks at home. I came up with that, and there's four other ones I practice for minor two fives, and I put them through all the twelve keys on the piano, and then I do it on trumpet. And how I did it, how I've figured out how to play the piano to this point to like be able to do this. You're asking the wrong guy. Lots of practice and not giving up takes a long time. But it's something you can't rush, you know. Something you gotta stick with. Minor two five back to our root. Minor two five again back to our root. And then another minor two five back to the four. Well, not back, but to the four. And that's the thing. It's just like really being able to play over that is the biggest thing. And then it goes to a major chord, which is my nipples are getting a little too stiff for this video, so I'm gonna have to uh, leave y'all be. Order in the court. You're gonna have to go against Michael Jordan. Jordan! Fuck.